Welcome to Wine and Real Estate, the podcast where we drink wine, we have fun, and we learn about real estate investing. Real estate investing is so much more than just buying buildings. It's about building relationships, building your dreams, building your dream lifestyle, customizing your life. What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? It's much more than money. It's more than getting rich. It's a different type of wealth. It's the wealth of time, the wealth of freedom. And now let's get to the wine and the real estate. Let's start this episode with some financing tips from our go-to mortgage broker, Streetwise Mortgages. Over to you, Dahlia. founder of Streetwise Mortgages and on today's episode I would like to share a fresh from the oven update on readvanceable mortgages. On Tuesday June the 28th of 2022 OSFI the regulator of Canada's banking system has proposed changes to the readvanceable mortgage products due to rising concerns about the Canadian household debt and the real estate environment ahead. To remind you, a readvanceable mortgage has two or more components, an amortizing mortgage component and a revolving line of credit component. It is a strategic product for many real estate investors whereby you can get a mortgage with a dynamic line of credit attached to it. And as you pay down the principal of the mortgage, any principal pay down advances to the line automatically, increasing its limit by an equivalent amount. For example, if you have an advanceable mortgage and you've paid down this month $1,000 of principal, that $1,000 becomes accessible to you on the line of credit. Under the new changes, OSFI is restricting what can be advanced on the line. Once OSFI's new guideline is implemented, all principal payments to any mortgage portion above 65% loan to value must be used to reduce the total global limit of the advanceable mortgage until such a time that limit is at 65% or less. So staying away from the jargon, essentially using payments to reduce debt until such a time where the global limit of the loan hits 65% or less before you can reaccess the pay down. This rule will take effect on all new readvanceable mortgage applications and approvals effective October 31st or December 31st of 2023, depending on the lender's physical year end. For existing readvanceable mortgages, this rule would come into effect at the time of the mortgage renewal if it is after October or December. Let's look at an example. Let's say you have a house with a value of a million dollars and that you have a readvanceable product for 80% of the value. That is $800,000 in total. Divided into two components, a mortgage component for $700,000, which is 70% of the value, and a line of credit component for $100,000, representing the remaining 10%. Under the current rules, if you make a $100 principal payment on the mortgage, you can immediately re-borrow that $100 from the line of credit. Under the new rules, you can't. You can't access the principal pay down until you have paid down the total combined loan to 65% of the value, which is $650,000. Using the same example of a home valued at a million dollars, let's say that you now have a readvanceable mortgage that is broken into three components. Component number one is for 150,000, which is 15% of the value in the form of a mortgage. Component number two is for 250,000, which is 25% of the value also in the form of a mortgage. And component number three is for $400,000, which is 40% of the value in the form of a line of credit. Under the current rules, if you pay down the principal on any of the mortgage components, your line of credit grows by the same amount automatically until the line of credit eventually gets to 65% of the value. Under the new rules, remember any payments on a mortgage above 65% loan to value cannot advance to the line. 
So if you pay down $100 on component number one mentioned earlier, you won't get that money on the line of credit. Why? Because between component number two and component number three, you are at 65% of the value. But you would get the pay down on component number two. Why? Because between component number one and three, you have room to advance as they are currently at 55% of the value. How does this affect you as an investor? If you're applying for a new advanceable mortgage with a federally regulated bank, it is important to plan the mortgage versus line of credit components going forward so you can continue to benefit from the advance of the mortgage pay down sooner than later. And if you currently have an existing advanceable mortgage on one or more properties with a federally regulated bank, you may benefit from restructuring the product before the new guidelines kick in to avoid a situation where limits are imposed automatically on the features you can access at the time of renewal. If you have a readvanceable mortgage on one or more properties, or you wish to discuss the impact of this change on your ability to access capital or solutions to help you pivot, contact our team at Streetwise Mortgages at info at streetwisemortgages.com. Cheers to your success. Hello, everyone. So welcome, Gary, Gary Hibbert. It's been a little while in the making, but we finally get to connect. And uh, so, yeah, welcome. And I saw you drinking something. You have to tell us what you're drinking. since. Yes, well, I've, I've got a glass of wine here. I actually like this whole theme of the, the podcast, right? I think it's great. Wine and real estate, uh, you know, have something to drink, kind of get each other loose and, and, and talk it. freely, right? That's what it's all about. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's called Carnivore. It's a uh, cab. Oh, yeah, from uh, California. Yeah. Uh, it's a 2019 mm -hmm. bottle, so. Mm, uh, very uh, I'm enjoying the flavor of this one this evening. Awesome. And I find the reason we picked wine and real estate, it's like real estate as it ages, well, ages or appreciates, it gets better, just like wine kind of as it ages, it gets better. Well, not all wines, but most. most. <laughs> right. Same with yes. real estate. Some deals are just bad. Just get out of them. Mm. And some deals are good. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. What? I mean, look, there, there's, there's been some properties where I've had to get out. I've looked at it later on in life. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I rushed into it or it's just not fitting my profile and my portfolio that I need to have right now. Cause sometimes it pulls you down. And so yeah. if it's doing that, you, you gotta, you gotta get offload out. it and, and put it into something else that's moving in the right direction. Just that's like a, a bad point. wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grab some cheese, coat your, your gums and all that stuff and it tastes better <laughs> and then pour it down the drain and move on. That's right. <laughs> there you go. That's so right. What, so we kind of jumped right into it, Gary. Why don't you introduce yourself for those who, who don't know who is Gary Hibbert and what does he do in real estate? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, that's a good question. So, um, yeah, I've been investing in real estate now since 2008. I got into it because um, I'd seen what had happened with the debt accumulation that we're having. Uh, and for whatever reason, I couldn't figure out why were we always behind the eight ball. And so I'd gone to the bank for the third time to take all my debt and consolidate it and put it in my into my mortgage. Mm. And it was so odd to me because I, I had a great job working at TD Bank. My wife was working at Bank of Montreal. And I couldn't figure out why were we always paycheck to paycheck, like it felt like there was more month than money. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's uh, the worst situation it, possible. It, it is. It is. And it, it, this is the day that really kind of changed my life. And so I'm sitting in my financial advisor's office. Um, she's like, listen, Gary, you know what? You obviously don't know how to manage your credit cards and your lines of credits and your HELOC. <clears throat> so why don't I just get rid of it all for you? I'm like, yes, please do. Just get rid <laughs> I want nothing to do with it. I'm not going to put myself in debt ever again. Wow. And, you know, I didn't understand the difference between good debt and bad debt there. Right. I was I was in a corporate world nine to five and uh, didn't really have any real financial education. Right. And so she left the office and I'm sitting there by myself and I look up on the wall and I see this index chart, which shows you what um, interest rates are, have done for the last 50 yeah. years, the stock market, everything. And what I zeroed in on that particular day was what inflation was doing. And so over 50 years. That inflation money was is doing, going down. <laughs> well, inflation was doing anywhere from like 2% to as high as sometimes, you know, 17, 18, 19%. And so if you average it out, 
you know, it worked out to about maybe say 5% each year over 50 year period. Mm. And so I was like, well, hold on a second. I got a raise at TD, which was good. The, the previous year of a thousand dollars. But when but I did the five, math, yeah. sorry, but not 5% or more like, no. Six right. And so when I did the calculation, it worked out to 1.6% increase. And I was like, I get it. It's mathematically impossible to outpace inflation by just having a job. And so yeah. then I was like, well, if my house bailed me out three times, what if I had just one more? And that's when my eyes opened up. Mm. Yeah. Can you imagine like a second house? And that's what we tell <laughs> people all the time. Just get one more property. And now you're like way ahead compared to a lot of people. And if you're crazy like us, get a whole bunch more <laughs> than yeah. one more. But anyway, that's a good starting point. <laughs> Yeah. And I think they call it real estate because it's real, right? You can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it. It's tangible, Yeah, you know, and, and it's oh, one it of those is. assets that seem to outpace inflation. Not all the time, but most no. of the time. No, that's right? such a good point. And what a big eye opener, like just seeing how inflation affects our lives and are, aren't we feeling it this year? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's 17, 19%. Um, what about the landlord and tenant board? Aren't they supposed to you know, Ontario allow rent increases to follow inflation. They, yeah, we could do very well this year, but yeah, we're not going to get it. But <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And so from there, I, I got into real estate investing. I picked up my first investment property in Oshawa, uh, bought it for, for 200000 And it, it remember, remember, though, I had gotten rid of all my home, home equity line of credit. Get the restart. Credit. Yeah. And so I had to do a joint venture. I knew nothing about joint ventures. I just knew that I wanted to get into real estate. And so I ended up doing it with a friend of mine. Um, and uh, that was my very first investment property. But I no quickly, friends or a friend, <laughs> a, a, a friend from that I've known when I was like five years old. Whoa, really? so dear yeah. friend. And you guys yeah. are still friends. We're still friends. <laughs> Good. Okay. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. And then uh, I realized that I knew very little about real estate investing. I picked up another property and that was when I realized, wow, I, I got to learn about this stuff because I put in some bad tenants. And that's usually that learning curve is where yeah. you put bad tenants in and you realize that you're not using your head, but you're using your heart. And, and I put some professional tenants in. And I was like, I get it now. Now I know why people don't invest in real estate. And so I had to do some homework and do some research and find out and reach out to people that were where I wanted to be. Yeah, it's so smart. And I'm, I hope a person I'm anyway, one of our new partners, <laughs> we're doing joint ventures as well. I hope he's listening. It's like, we have to be nice to the tenants. Mm, sorry, Walmart's not nice to us. This is a business. So yes, you can be fair and all that. Absolutely. But once you give an inch, they take a, a mile. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You got to be like a strict, you got to be like a parent, right? You, yeah. You, you got to love, you got to, you know, uh, you know, love them and look after them, but you, you can't allow them to walk all over you. Nope. Right. No, you can't invite very... them to the bar, you, you know, your barbecue next weekend. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. No. Nope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so you started off in Oshawa, uh, Gary. Are you still um, investing in that market or have you switched markets or are you doing several? Um... Yeah, good question. So when I first started investing in real estate, I was in Whitby. Uh, then I moved into Oshawa um, and then out into Curtis and Bowmanville. And mm -hmm. then as the market continued to increase in price and 2017 was really kind of uh, that year when it just Yeah, turning loaded. point. Yeah. And uh, and as I realized that, you know, the numbers weren't working the way that I wanted them to work anymore. And I had to find a new market for the investors that we work with. And so we, we started taking a look at Coburg and Brighton and all these other areas. And then we decided to look at Peterborough. And Peterborough is where we've been now since 2017. So a good five years. Wow. And I, and I love that market. And I'm glad we went there because the where is positioned is a great hub but it also allows for expansion in these other small towns like Buckhorn and Lakefield and Bob Cage. And, and now you're in the cottage country and the Kawartha yes. lakes. And mm. so it, it, it allowed us to be able to say, yes, this market's going to continue to grow, but it's also tons of room for expansion. And so that's why we chose Peterborough and worked very closely with the city um, and realized that they needed uh, investors to come in to help create uh, some affordable housing 
Uh, and, and so we did that with them and, and we work closely with them. We do webinars with them because we want to uh, assist the city and also help the investors and create like a win-win. No, That's I love so that. Cool. Yeah. And it's a city that was overlooked for many years. I remember the first time I heard about it <laughs> is on, I used to, well, I lived in Ottawa or grew up east of Ottawa as a kid. And then I went to school, um, college in, Fa in London, so Fanshawe yeah. College. And I was taking the train, yeah, via rail or something. And it went through Peterborough and the bus or the bus, maybe that was the bus. And right. I'm like, what's this city out of nowhere? Kind of like London. London at least is close to the 401, but Peterborough used to be far. It had that one highway, but now there's a major link with the 407 connecting not far from it. It's really yeah. changing the, the city and the future. Mm -hmm. And higher education as well. Like all the fundamentals are there. So it's it's, it's a great and, spot. And that's what I love about it, right? You're right. Like the fundamentals, right? I always say, you know, follow your eds and your meds, right? Education yeah. and, and and hospital. And they've got a university there. They've got a college there. Um, and it's a, it's a great expanding city. Population is going in the right direction. Job growth is going in the right direction. Um, and it's a, it's a fun city as well, too. Right? They've got so many different things happening throughout the summer. There's a lot of revitalization happening there, um, and it's close to the lake. Who doesn't want to be close to the lake? Yeah, right that's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's where I'm heading this weekend, actually. You know, I I, I like Peterborough so much that uh, my wife and I, we ended up uh, purchasing a cottage up there. Oh, wow. And, yeah, which, which makes it that much more enjoyable to say being at the cottage, and then, you know, if I need to jump into the city to show a client Not a property. Not bad at all. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's it's a quick little drive, and then I'm back up on the dock and having a beer, right? So wow. that's awesome. Yeah, so, so I'm doing I'm doing wine and real estate at the cottage. Perfect, I love it, love it. I think that we should do more of that. Yes. So tell us, Gary. I think that that's so cool that you're working with the city and and creating these win win situations. I think that a lot of cities would uh, really get some value by working with investors because I think that we have a really good idea of what's happening in the market, even for renters. So. So tell us a bit, like, how did you end up working with the city? Because um, most webinars? cities are not yeah, open to that. Yeah, they're kind of more closed to working with investors. So I'm so intrigued by that. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I always like to do, and I, and I and I think I would say that I learned this earlier on, was why fight the system when yeah. you can work with the system? And so mm. once I started understanding that when we were in Oshawa and working with the city and talking to people there, I realized, like, wow, you know what? These The, the, the people of the city have actually seeing so many different ways to create uh, two unit properties that maybe I might overlook something, but they've seen mm -hmm. something that has worked before. Because at the end of the day, they're, they're, they, if they have a mandate to create additional housing, they want to make sure that it's also safe housing. And, and so yeah. do I as well, too, because if I'm putting tenants in there or family in there, and look, at the end of the day, if you call them tenants or family, they are families. I want to make sure that these families have homes that are safe, there's an egress window, so if something was to happen that they can get out of the home and escape, I, and I want to be able to sleep at night. That's that's really yeah. what I want, and same with these families as well, too. So uh, I, th I think working with the city is great, um, and also, too, they, they will give you insights in regards to uh, what's coming down the pipeline, yeah. uh, maybe changes to bylaws, so that now you can position yourself when you're buying these homes to say, hey, look, let's take a look at properties that are, have larger lots, because mm -hmm. maybe now we can add a garden suite, or we can have now three units instead of just mm. only two. So don't be scared to work with the city. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great uh, tip. Yeah, And I liked at the beginning you mentioned, so Peterborough, yes, it's on many people's radars. It's gone up like crazy. Mm -hmm. But you said the surrounding area as well is doing quite well. Cottage country. But also beyond that, you mentioned some small towns and maybe cities. Um, so a lot of people overlook that. They get scared. Investors like to stay usually in larger centers. But how, what would you say, like, is that kind of a commuter city? People work in Peterborough and they live in small towns or are they kind of self-sufficient small towns? They wouldn't be self-sufficient. They, they, they would be small towns, the tertiary markets. Okay. But these tertiary markets now can, uh, you know, if they can't get what they need in those smaller markets and towns, they can then go into Peterborough. Here's okay. the thing to remember is that because you don't live in Peterborough, um, there are lots of families that love to live in Peterborough, but because of the housing crisis there it's and they can't. can't find a place to rent, 
then they're okay with moving into Bob Cajun and Buckhorn mm -hmm. and Lakefield because to them, they're familiar with it. That'd be like, say, living in Toronto and say, well, you know, I don't want to invest in, say, Whitby or Oshawa because it's nah. not Toronto. <laughs> I, I get it, but you're not living there. There are families that are fine with moving to those places That's and it. coming back into those major that major hub, which is Peterborough. Mm, and people really want point. more space sometimes in the smaller towns, bigger lots. Um, yeah. Different and, and some of them, too, they're like, you know what, fine, let's move out into the small towns and get a lakefront property. And especially COVID has opened that up as well, mm -hmm. too, right, where people want to, uh, you know, work and play mm -hmm. from, from home. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I love that you talk about the cottage country. One question I'm dying to ask you is to talk about those mini retirements. Yeah, I think we've already kind uh, of seen <laughs> some inkling of it during yes. a day or <laughs> what that's all about. So yeah. About so, that. yeah. So the mini retirement is this. So when we started, we started our investment club in 2010. It's called Smart Home Choice. And so a lot of people, you know, have asked me over the course of numerous years of like, why do you call it Smart Home Choice? It doesn't sound like a real estate investment club. Yeah. And I was like, you're right. And the reason why was because to me, I was more focused on smart goals, which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant time. And so to me, that resonated more with what I was trying to achieve because mm -hmm. real, I don't love real estate investing. I love what it does for me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so talking to a lot of real estate investors and doing my own podcast, what I've learned is that some people have gone through depression because they've got this drive to have 200 doors or yeah, 300 you doors. 200, that's a lot. <laughs> and I'm not knocking it. It's just, what is it? Yeah. What is it that you want in your life? And so early on, because I was really big on listening to uh, people that were where I wanted to be. And one of my mentors was Jim Rohn. And so after listening to him and realizing it's about creating and designing a life, yeah. I, I sat down and I got this big white Bristol board and I sat down with my wife and my kids and said, what do you guys want from this business we're going to start, which is Smart Home Choice? And the kids were really young at the time. They said, oh, we want like a mascot. Cool. OK, what else do you want? Well, we want a million dollars every year. No problem. What else do you want? Uh, we want two months vacation. Why don't we do four months vacation? Yeah. Yeah. So they got excited. So we allowed them to, to dream with us. And so we sat back and we said, could we actually do four months vacation in a year? And so we did. And what we did was we ran our company. And then at the end of June, we took July and August off. And then we came back in August. And then we shut it down again in December and January. Yeah, and why not? We have never stopped doing that to this day because it was about creating a lifestyle, not worrying about retiring at 65, but why not retire twice a year and be able to do what I want to do while I still have the vitality and the energy to, to, to do that to my body, to be on the sea to, to be yeah. able to sit and drink and have good times. And then in those times of relaxation, you get to the end where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. I need purpose in my life. Yeah, because people say, well, you know what, man, if I had a million dollars, I would retire. OK, go and be a professional really. beach bum for a year. Let's see how long you last. You won't. <laughs> right. You need purpose in life. And so yeah. that's what we decided to do, because then now if I'm purposeful with what I'm doing, well, then I never have to worry about retiring because I do it twice a year anyways. That's we need so to do cool. that, Jennifer. I definitely want to <laughs> retire twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> we have nice places now, too, but we just don't get to go. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll tell you this as well, too, because I give so much and my wife gives so much. We are now getting to this point of feeling burnt out. And we but we have something that we're looking forward to because, yeah. we know, in the next what are we here now? Another five weeks. And you're like, for two there. We're good. Yeah. And Maybe we can retirement. now enjoy, <laughs> we can do what we want to do, hang out at the cottage. And I'll tell you this as well, too. I'll add this because I think this is really important because people get caught up in return on investment. But you know what's really more important than that? Return on time. And yeah, the, that's the biggest ROI. Really, people forget it. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you the best way to slow time down is a cottage. It really and truly is because you can put the phone away. You can enjoy doing things outdoors. You can enjoy, you know, going on the sea dues or the boats and just spending time with friends and family and having a good conversation around a campfire. There's nothing better than that. 
That's so awesome. Then you have to tell us though, Gary, how do you get out like when you come out of retirement, like how do you get everything like going over again? Yeah, it'd be rough like starting. <laughs> you'd be again. like, oh man, I don't know if I want to go out of retirement this month. <laughs> you ease into it or <laughs> It is tough. I won't lie. You're right. It, it is tough. So what you got to do is you got to party really hard that your body can't take it anymore. <laughs> no more sunburn, everything. That's alcohol, it. That's whatever. it. You got you to you work hard, play harder. And uh, and then you get back into that work. But yeah, you're right, though. It, it does take some time to get back into it. But once you do, and once you start to surround yourself with the people that um, are, 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 at least for me anyways, that are looking for assistance and help and finding investment properties. And then also not only that, but also our partners, like our accountants, our lawyers, our, uh, you know, home inspectors. Like, you know, we've built this family around what we're doing. So now we're getting back together with our other family, which is our business family. And so it's like, it's like a best of both worlds. It's like a reunion after two months. Hey, how have you been? What did you do this summer? Exactly. And like you said, you kind of grow tired after a while. Okay, the boat, I've done it so many times. I've been to the beach now. I need to do something, like you said, the purpose. So exactly. And I think that's what a lot of people are lacking in their, their jobs or work is that sense of purpose because you just don't have time to, to see it anymore. You're always in it. and. Right. And and, I, and let me just kind of clarify that as well, too. So during the summer as well, like I am working a bit, but you know that mm. book by Tim Ferriss? Is it Tim Ferriss? The I did four hour work week? Week. Yeah. That's the best way I've been able to figure <laughs> out how to do a four hour work week is in the summer where, you know, I still have to get back to some emails. I still sometimes take a client out here and there, um, but it really has gotten down to just a four hour work week uh, during the summer months, which is OK. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Keeps yeah. you in the loop because total cut off exactly. it could be hard exactly yeah so so i am but but i mean in regards to events in regards to weekly meetings with my teams that's uh, because i'm also part of a brokerage as well too all that stops mm. right oh, that's cool. great what yeah. a good idea so one thing uh so we've been talking about real estate investing many retirements but why should people invest in real estate i am we know the answer <laughs> and I think that's kind of how you afford those mini mini retirements. But why? What's in it for uh, people? Good question. Here's what I think people need to do, and and I've been doing this over the last several years, uh, and I think it's the best way to predict where things may go in the future. At least mm -hmm. it's the best crystal ball that I've found is studying history. And history, it doesn't always repeat, but it does rhyme. And so if you go back even as far as Roman Empire times, if you go back to, say, the Great Depression, 1929, go back and understand what happened at the end of World War II in Bretton Woods. Go back and study what happened with Richard Nixon in 1971 and when cash became trash. If you understand all that, then you can understand what's happening today. And mm -hmm. so the printing of money, what they're doing, you will then understand that cash is trash. You mm -hmm. can't keep your money in the bank because Under your <laughs> well, yeah and, and see look at what inflation is doing when i saw what they were doing with the printing of money i was like i cannot keep my money in the bank but you it's know. because i understand why it's not like oh well hold on maybe i need to save my money and so no no i need to deploy my money into a hard asset because it's not that real estate is getting more expensive it's because they are devaluing the currency and That's once you it. understand debasing and what that means, well, then you'll know what to do. And so that is why right now, uh, you know, I tell people, you got to get into real estate. You got to get into a hard assets. Um, it's not risky. It's risky if you don't understand what you're doing. Yeah. But you but you have to understand and do it with people that understand history and know what's happening in the market, because what they're doing has been done before. Oh, yeah. This is, this is not new. brand new. People think that it's new. It's just they've never lived through this before. So how do you understand what to do? Study history. You do. And we live in Ottawa. And a lot of people think Ottawa, government town, it's bulletproof. I remember when I was a kid, 1990, it was, we were 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And Ottawa had major layoffs. And there were abandoned houses, people with patio furniture in their uh, living rooms and stuff. And it wasn't what it is right now. Here, people can just not work. And anyway, I'm sorry for the Ottawa folks, but <laughs> there's some people that are quite relaxed about their work. You see them shopping during the day and things. And 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. So and and I'll add to that as well, too, is because like I know a lot of people now are, are nervous to invest in real estate and I get it. I understand it. Yeah. And, and, and so I'm going to add to this because I think it's really important to me is pick your poison. So before when everybody wanted to get into it, you had multiple offers. Everybody like, oh, I got to get in. It's a miss of it's fear of missing out. Now that interest rates have gone up, people have pulled away and now there's opportunity again. And they're like, yeah. well, I don't want to invest because interest rates are going up. Well, pick your poison. What do you want? Do you want multiple offers or do you want rising interest rates? I know. Well, but but I'll add to this as well, too, is that, um, you know, I lost my train of thought there. Where was I going to go with it? Because I think this is really important, is that if you understand where the market is going, okay, um, then you'll also realize that the U.S. right now has already hit half a recession. And yeah. if they hit another recession, so GDP growth is down one quarter, the, the definition of a recession is two quarters where they have a second GDP down. Well, then are they going to continue to raise interest rates? And so I'm going to go on a limb here and say, I don't believe so. I think you might no, be one and done, and done. And then they're going to have to then maybe lower the interest rates again. And then they're, they're going to have to turn those printing presses on again, because yeah. the real estate is such an important piece. And if they don't do that, then businesses are then going to start laying people off and then you might move into the stagflation. So and that's the worst space really to be, I think. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's a very interesting time, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see where things go. And here's the best advice I can give anybody is learn how to adapt and pivot. That's adapt it. Adapt and pivot. Don't sit in the sidelines. You got to play in the game. That's where you, you learn how it works. You're going to make mistakes. Um, but you do it with people that are able to also learn, pivot and adapt as well, too. Yeah, that's such a good point. Can you give us kind of a little bit of an insight on how you adapt and, and pivot, Gary? Are you adapting your strategies? Are you adapting which markets you're investing in? Uh... Yeah, good question. Um, I'm always pivoting and adapting. It could be strategies because sometimes a particular strategy won't work anymore. Like when yeah. I first started... I did the Burr strategy. I didn't know it was called the Burr, but I did the Burr <laughs> strategy back in 2008. The um, Burr before then, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then, uh, then I did uh, rent to own because I was I was focusing more on creating more additional cash flow. And rent to own at that yeah. time was a great strategy back in 2010 up until around 2016, 17. Then I kind of went back into the two unit. Um, uh, yeah, and so. yeah, so I'm, I'm always adapting the strategy, looking mm -hmm. for cash flow and properties and also moving into different markets. You, you have to, you got to learn how to pivot and adapt. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes and I'm not even saying you always have to move markets, but you always no. have to at least adapt and pivot if you need to. And, and a lot to that as well, too, which I think is important is that when I go back, cause I do newsletters every single week since I started, I'm wow. big on consistency uh, and, and being disciplined is that um, there are things that happen in the market that when I go back and take a look at it, it's like, oh, there's a new change happening. The real estate market is never going to be the same. Oh, there's another change happening in 2013. The real estate investment market is never going to be the same. 2015, another. And so what I've seen <laughs> over the years is there's this theme of change. change and there's always <laughs> going to be change. So then don't fight the change. Just be like water. Right. Yeah. Be like water, adapt, yeah, really move. Good. Right. Even with COVID, you know, I didn't I didn't fight it. I was like, all right, full, cool. We have to now then move to online mm. and, and let's be one of the front riders. Let's do like exclusive market updates every Monday at noon and we'll give the best analysis of where we think and what's happening in the market. Yeah. And, and that's what we did. And, and that helped to grow our database, our, our the followers that we had. And so I'm always open to change and I, I, I like it. I look forward to it because it allows me to um, learn new things and share ideas and, and know that I'm going to fail from time to time, but I'm also going to get new skill sets. Yeah, that's so important. Like real estate, you, like you said, you're just always adapting and changing. There's always <laughs> a new thing that you never, ever expected. Never in a million years. Exactly. There's stuff, the way certain people live and the way certain things are, are done. You never know what to expect. But I love the analogy of going online as well. It was kind of bound to happen as well, but maybe more over 15 to 20 years instead of bang, like... 
<laughs> 24 we definitely months. got a push <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> covid sped things up yeah it sure it did. did and to 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 um some a lot of nice things came out of it like you said digital communities we get to connect so people are a lot more open to online and Mm-hmm. and international investments which is something we're doing or or like long distance things like that really like buying in peterborough i know a lot of people from ottawa investing there and it's kind of it's not long distance but it's almost four hours from ottawa so right it can be considered far and with more internet and more connections that uh, people are are evolving i know mm-hmm. it was already there but a lot of people didn't know same with zoom i was using that for years before and then people discovered Zoom, which was like, okay, I, yeah, that's like <laughs> common knowledge, I thought, but I guess not. Yeah. So, right. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, and, and I think it's good. You know, I, I think what people need to get comfortable with is just embrace and change. Yeah. You know, it, it, you don't need to fight it. Just learn it, understand it. You don't always have to say dive right into it, but you should at no. least understand it, to get a high level overview. Because if you need to be able to adapt, then you can't. And I mean, you know, you look at some of the restaurants that weren't able to survive um, and the ones that were able to survive, they they, they pivoted very quickly. And then even with when they remember when they're doing the open and the close and the open and the close, some oh. of them never reopen and yeah. continue to stay just online and pick up only. And they survived. They thrived. And some of them actually became even busier because yeah. they they adapted quickly. And right. it is and something you mentioned earlier, consistency as well. So people knew what to expect. Yeah. And, and in an age where you didn't know what to expect anymore. So yeah. And success leaves clues. You know, mm-hmm. listen, if you want to be successful, study success. You want to be yeah. healthy, study health. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's all there, you know, and uh, and and that's what I try to do um flawlessly, even though I make lots of mistakes, is just to study uh people that are successful, listen to them. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning is, you know, I'll go for a run or I'll go for a walk. I don't even look at my emails, put my my AirPods in and just listen to success. Listen mm-hmm. to people that are motivating me to start my day right. Because I remember before I did all that, I used to look at the emails in the morning in bed. Uh, it's the and, and, oh, I, and, I'd be, yeah, and I'd be, and then my wife would just be waking up I'm like, hey, did you see this email? Did you see this? <laughs> And so it puts you in this completely horrific mood right before you even start. get out of bed. And mm-hmm. so, you know, from 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 learning from people like Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn and Bob Proctor, and I can name a million different people that I listen to, uh, it, it's changed my whole entire life. And what I've learned over the years is, yes, you can design a life. You can live a life of of whatever it is that you decide that you want whenever you're ready to it's just you know we are not birds we don't have to fly south no we can, we can change whenever we want to no, i oh, love that's it that's awesome so how can yeah. people get a hold of you gary if they want to learn more if they want to reach join out your to club. you join your club your newsletter too yeah. that's, it is good i do receive it it's great so I invite yeah you to read well, it. thank you i appreciate that yeah if they want to learn more about me they i mean they can go to smarthomechoice.ca that's our uh, our investment club um, if they want to get in touch with me personally, they can go to GaryHibbert.ca um, or they can just type in my name, Gary Hibbert, and you know I'll come up on Instagram or Facebook. That, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Awesome. That's great. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Let's drink to that. Yes. <laughs> well, Cheers. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. First interview on Wine and Real Estate. It's been a pleasure. We'll have to catch up in a um, few months to a year maybe and find out about your latest mini retirement what did you do and how it <laughs> I would went. love that I would love that well thank you very much for having me here I love what you guys are doing and uh I, I, hopefully uh your audience gets something good out of this I'm Absolutely. sure they will <laughs> thank you thank you bye bye hey there listeners we hope you enjoy this latest episode of the wine and real estate podcast Yes, absolutely. You can find us on Instagram. Our handle is wine underscore and underscore real estate. So wine and real estate on Facebook, FL Homes Corp. And you can also find us on our YouTube channel. Yes. And please make sure to give us a rating, five stars Mm -hmm. or any comments. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we love suggestions as well. Cheers. Yeah. Chin chin.